autonomous desk. Bumped into it. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a radiologist doing my sixth and final year of subspecialty training in interventional radiology in the great city of New York City. Now, many of you all know I am looking for my first job as an attending interventional radiologist, and it is a lot harder than I thought. On today's video, we are going to be talking about everything I'm looking for in my first job as an interventional radiologist. Let's go. So the biggest decision for me to start off was trying to figure out if I wanted to pursue academic medicine or private practice medicine. And I did an entire video about the differences between academics and private practice. We'll link that up here. I made that video a few weeks ago and went over all the differences between the two. And I've ultimately decided that I want to pursue, many of you all probably guessed, I want to pursue private practice. The reason being is because it kind of fits everything I'm looking for in a job. And if you want to know more about the private practice role as an interventional radiologist or a diagnostic radiologist, check out that video, link up here again, and you'll see everything I'm talking about because everything I talked about in that video in respect to private practice is what I'm looking for. So the next thing I'm looking for in my private practice That was unexpected. It's autonomous desk bumped into it. Where was I? So the next thing I'm looking for in a private practice is a private practice that's associated with a smaller community hospital. And by smaller community hospital, I mean something around like two, 300, maybe 400 beds. And to put that in perspective, the hospital I'm currently working at is almost like 900 or maybe a thousand beds. So it's quite the difference. And the reason I wanna be in a smaller community hospital is because I kind of like that vibe of these smaller hospitals where it's like cheers. You know, everybody knows your name. I guarantee so many people won't get that reference because I didn't even watch those shows growing up. They are a little dated. But anyways, that's why I want to practice there. When I roam through the halls of my current hospital and I rotate through multiple hospitals, you sometimes will never see the same person more than once. And I don't really like that. I like to have a family type environment where I like that kind of family cordial environment where everybody knows each other. It's what I was looking for in residency and I got that in residency. So basically I'm looking for a tight knit community where I can get to know everybody and they can get to know me. The other reason I wanna pursue a community hospital or a smaller community hospital is that the case complexity is about average. I don't want to be in a procedure for 10 hours doing a very complex procedure, but I also don't want to be doing a procedure that's so simple I can do it in two seconds. The next thing I'm looking for in a practice is a good location and probably somewhere preferably around the New York City or tri-state area and there are many reasons behind that. One is because I love this area. Two, I love the seasons. And third, and arguably the most important reason, is because my wife was born and raised here and her whole family lives in New York City and we want to be close to them or as close to them as possible. Happy wife, happy life. The next thing I'm looking for in a private practice job is a lot of vacation time. This is actually pretty difficult to find when you're first starting out in private practice because not many practices allow for a large vacation package to new graduates or new attending positions. The partners in those groups will get a nice vacation package somewhere in the order of eight to 12, maybe 14, maybe 16 weeks of vacation a year. But starting out, I'm hopefully looking for somewhere in the eight to 10 week vacation route, but maybe even higher if I can get lucky. And the reason is not because I need all this time off and you know work is hard and I just need to sit on the couch and go to Mexico every other week or whatever and take a vacation. The real reason is because I need time to work on my YouTube stuff. And if I can have a week off at least once a month or so, it allows me time to film content, get content together, get ideas together and focus on my social media stuff, which is, you know, a side job to what I do and a way for me to be creative that I love. So it's really important for me to have time to do my social media and that's what I'll do on some of my vacation weeks. Now, before I go into the next thing I'm looking for in a job, I want you to take this moment, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up like button because it really helps out the channel. We're almost at 200,000 subscribers. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well and we can keep making these awesome videos. 
The next thing I'm looking for in my private practice job is something that is 70% interventional radiology and 30% diagnostic radiology. So I am doing interventional radiology, which means I am subspecializing in interventional radiology, but to do so, I had to do a diagnostic radiology residency, which means after I finish fellowship, I can get dual board certified in diagnostic and interventional radiology, which means I can do procedures as an interventional radiologist and also read x-rays, CT, ultrasound, MRIs, etc. as a diagnostic radiologist. The reason I want to do 70% IR and 30% diagnostic radiology is because wearing lead is pretty brutal to do 12 hours a day every single day. So some days I would like to sit in a dark room and read studies instead of being on my feet wearing lead all day every single day and furthermore as i get older especially you know 20 or so years from now when i'm like 50 something years old i don't want to be wearing lead all day long so i want to maintain that diagnostic ability so in the future if i want to give up interventional radiology altogether i still have diagnostics to fall back on and that's kind of why i went into this field to begin with because it gives me options i can do ir half the time i can do dr and i can switch it up or do whatever I want. Now this actually isn't too hard to find in practice because most people who do IR really want to do only 100% IR, but the reality is most private practices require you to read at least something. So whether it be 70-30, 60-40, 80-20, you will likely do diagnostic radiology even as an interventional radiologist in private practice. The only real way you'll find 100% IR is if you do academics. The next thing I'm looking for in a private practice is a practice that allows me to kind of be creative and expand things and build a practice how I want to build it. Say I want to start building a uterine fibroid embolization clinic or increase my uterine fibroid embolizations at my practice. I want a practice that has my back and will support me in doing so. The last thing you want is to go into a practice that doesn't have your back when you're trying to build something. And I think this is really important. Sometimes practices don't have the same vision you do. So it's important to kind of, during the interview process, talk to them about it and see if they'd be willing to support your efforts and expanding the practice in any way you want to. Me personally, I will probably like to expand into uterine fibroid embolization or prostatic artery embolizations and try to build that practice up, which benefits both me and my patients as well as the practice. So the next thing is salary. Now this is obviously a big topic, but most salaries are are about the same for first year radiologists and interventional radiologists in private practice. The difference is when you become partners. So many people don't know that you usually do a two to three year partnership track, which means you are an associate to the practice. And then after two or three years, you get invited to become a partner into that practice and share in the partnership and share in the profits together with all the other partners. So your salary can actually double once you hit partnership track and you want to go somewhere where your opportunities are the highest. The next thing I'm looking for is somewhere that has a good work-life balance. I want somewhere where you work hard but also play hard at the same time. I mentioned having more vacation weeks, which is a plus for me, but also I want to have normal working hours. I don't want to have these fellowship hours where I'm going in at 6.30 a.m. and leaving at 9.30 at night because that just isn't sustainable. And the older you get, the less you want to work that hard. So if I could find somewhere that has like a normal seven to five, eight to five type situation, that's what I'm looking for. And the reason is not because I'm lazy. It's because I value other things outside of work, like obviously all of this social media stuff. But the biggest thing for me is I like to work out in the morning. So if I have time to go to the gym, work out in the morning, come back, shower, and then go to work, it makes my life so much better. I'm a morning person. So if I can find a job that either allows me to do that in the morning or finishes early in the afternoon so I can do that afterwards, either one will work for me. Now, ultimately what it comes down to is whatever practice I fit in the best at. You'll have a gut kind of feeling when you interview at these places, which I have been interviewing and have had these gut feelings already. It's the same as in residency. You have all the raw data, but you won't really know if that practice is right for you until you go see it, till you go meet the partners, till you meet the people working there, and then develop that gut feeling, which I always talk about. Now, obviously I'm not naive enough to think I'm going to find everything 100% that I listed in this video as all my job requirements, because no job is going to have everything you could possibly want. It's just not possible. There are too many things out there. The goal is to find the job that fits you the best 
best and meets the most number of those requirements that I listed of things I'm looking for. I know the job I find isn't going to meet all those requirements. I will have to compromise on something. The goal ultimately is to find the job that takes the most of those boxes. So on that note, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Make sure you smash that like subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Leave a comment below. If I like it, I'll respond to it. Otherwise, I'll see you all on the next video.